In this video, I will first briefly discuss some problems with and deceptions of prominent flat earthers and the flat earth movement, and then I will cover the 50 reasons why the earth is not flat. Samuel Robotham was the first person to use the pseudoscientific method called zeteticism for quote flat earth research. Instead of starting with a question and a hypothesis, which are then tested or falsified as in the scientific method, Zeteticism relies solely upon the experience, observations and conclusions of the tester. Such a method does not prevent self-deception or delusion because it does not seek to test or falsify the conclusions of the tester. Zeteticism allows errors to go unchecked. For example, Robotham believed that moonlight is dangerous and that it caused a boy to lose his eyesight because he slept in the field in the bright moonlight. Eric Dubay is an aggressive flat earther who also teaches demonic yoga is anti-Christian, pro-Hitler, blasphemes Jesus Christ by saying that he was a magic mushroom, believes in the occult and that reality is an illusion. He also dressed like a woman in a video and plagiarized at least 28 of his quote 200 proofs the earth is not a spinning ball. He might be a paid actor. Dubay also accuses almost all the main people in the flat earth movement of being paid shills, yet we are supposed to believe that he is not. Matt Boylan claims to be a whistleblower who used to create fake pictures for NASA. He claims to have inside information that NASA is hiding the secret, quote, truth that the Earth is flat and is promoting the idea that the Earth is a globe instead. Um, and there was a party uh, at somebody's cottage in the uh, Hamptons. And the power went out and it was about, say, about one o'clock in the evening and there was one gentleman who was friends with this guy consultant for the U.S. Defense Department. Now, this guy was basically um, a friend of one of my superiors and a colleague. They were listening to him. He seemed to be like kind of like this guy who was just this weird, I thought he was some sort of nut that these guys, like he's basically just like taking apart everything that they know or that they say every day in the office. He was basically explaining the flat earth and how it works. And uh, he literally drew the UN flag. If they could convince me it was flat. And what was creepy about the whole thing is that they were more laughing at me for not getting it. It never went back to it being a ball with these gentlemen that night. However, Boylan is an actor. Maggie. I knew it. Where's the girl? What girl? Maggie. There's no one named Maggie here. He was also in a semi-pornographic show called Body Paint Illuminati. Patricia Steer interviews various flat earthers. She dresses in various costumes in her videos, such as a pagan. Some of her guests also wear bizarre costumes. These people obviously don't want to be taken seriously and appear to be actors. According to the Freemason, Andrew Prescott, Freemasons formed zetetic societies to engage in anti-Christian and scientific debate. Eric Debay said that Freemasonry's biggest secret is that the earth is flat. Freemasonry is a diabolical sect. When Dubay was insulting Neil deGrasse Tyson, a globe earther, Dubay subtly endorsed this sect when he stated, quote, The best thing about Neil deGrasse Tyson is he's a Freemason, if you believe it or not, end quote. It would be no surprise if Dubay were a member of the Illuminati. It appears that the Flat Earth Movement is essentially a Masonic deception. Claudius Ptolemy, in his book Almagest, expresses his opinion that the Earth is a sphere, his views on the order of the universe were widely held for over 1,200 years. Quote, now that also the Earth taken as a whole is sensibly spherical, we could most likely think out in this way. End quote. The most popular flat Earthers map is an azimuthal equidistant projection map. The distances on such maps are only correct in relation to the center point. All other distances are distorted. An azimuthal equidistant projection map can be made for any point on Earth including Antarctica. The Qantas non-stop flight from Sydney to Santiago would not work on a flat Earth map. There are a number of permanent research stations in Antarctica 
and they can all vouch for the fact that Antarctica is only about 11,000 miles in circumference, not 78,000 miles, as a flat earth map shows. Antarctica is a continent even though its landmass is covered with ice. In the North Pole there are only temporary research stations because there is no landmass and the ice is constantly moving or breaking up. Fedor Konyukov circumnavigated Antarctica in 102 days. If he were doing this on a flat earth, he would have been travelling at an average of 26.94 knots per hour, which would have smashed the single hold speed record by 7 knots per hour and 101.5 days. The first overland crossing of Antarctica was completed by Vivian Fielk's team in 1958. According to Flat Earthers, this would be impossible. There are currently 45 companies that are members of the International Association of Antarctica Tourist Operations, including ships, flights and land base operations. During the 2007-2008 season, there were 46,265 visitors. None of these companies claim Antarctica is the end of the Earth. Antarctica has a six-month day and a six-month night each year, as does the North Pole. This would be impossible on a flat Earth. Many webcams are set up in Antarctica, where one can see pictures taken every 15 seconds to an hour, and which show the 24-hour day or 24-hour night. There are three poles in Antarctica, a geographic pole, a magnetic pole, and a ceremonial pole. The fact that lines of longitude converge on the geographic pole proves the Earth is a globe. Similarly to Antarctica, southern cities of the world have longer days during the December or summer solstice. Ushuaia, Argentina, 17 hours, 19 minutes. Cape Town, South Africa, 14 hours, 25 minutes. Hobart, Australia, 15 hours, 21 minutes. Invercargill, New Zealand, 15 hours, 48 minutes. This would be impossible on a flat Earth. The shadow on a sundial will go clockwise in the northern hemisphere, but counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. The sun rotates clockwise in the northern hemisphere, but counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Star trails appear to rotate clockwise in the southern hemisphere, but counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. The shadow of the moon waxes and wanes from right to left in the northern hemisphere, but from left to right in the southern hemisphere. A solar eclipse occurs only over a certain location on Earth, not the whole Earth because the Sun is much bigger than the Moon. According to the Flat Earth Theory, an eclipse should darken the whole Earth. An annular eclipse makes the Moon appear smaller than the Sun, whereas a total solar eclipse makes the Moon appear the same size as the Sun. Flat Earthers have no explanation for this, since they claim both the Sun and the Moon are the same size and the same distance from Earth. A selenalion is where an eclipse occurs with both the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time. Some flat earthers use this example in an attempt to debunk the globe earth. However, a selenalion simply occurs when the straight line between the sun, earth and moon, called a syzygy, happens when the sun is rising and the moon is setting. Due to atmospheric refraction, both the sun and moon are visible during such an eclipse. If a person were at the equator, according to the flat earth map, the sun would always rise and set northeast and northwest of the observer. However, in real life, the sun will rise and set southeast and southwest during winter. An analemma shows the change in a sun's position throughout the year. An analemma will also appear the other way up, depending on which hemisphere one views it from. Flat earthers have no explanation for analemmas. Flat earthers claim the sun acts as a spotlight, for which they have no evidence. The fact that half of the Earth is always lit and the other half is dark proves that the Flat Earth model is impossible. Many Flat Earthers deny the existence of satellites. Iridium flares occur when a satellite reflects sunlight very brightly, proving the existence of satellites. The Russian Electro-L satellites have taken many non-composite photos of the Earth. Geostationary satellites appear to stay in the one spot above the surface of the Earth. This would be impossible on a flat earth, for they would simply fall back to earth. Some flat earthers reject the existence of planets. Spectroscopy proves planets are real by showing the kinds of elements that are present on those planets. Some flat earthers believe that female astronauts perm their hair and are underwater in a tank to fake being in space. However, in this clip, the astronaut is washing her hair, which would destroy her permed hair and proves she is not underwater.
Sometimes the water gets away from you and you try and catch as much as you can. Then I just work the water up through to the ends of my hair. And I take my no rinse shampoo and squirt it also on the scalp, just a little bit, and rub it in. Again, kind of working it out to the ends. A number of amateur astronomers have taken photos of the International Space Station and geostationary satellites, proving that not all photos of such things are a hoax created by NASA. Lighthouses and radio masts and towers are deliberately built high so that their light and radio waves can reach further over the curvature of the Earth. Radio waves can also be skipped around the world by bouncing them off the ionosphere. On a flat Earth, this would not be necessary for there would be no curvature of the Earth to prevent line-of-sight transmissions over long distances. The light from a lighthouse is beamed out horizontally, not downwards towards the horizon. This allows the light from the lighthouse to be seen much further than the distance to the horizon. This is called the loom of the light. At 2147, the lookout reports the loom of a flashing light. An estimated position cannot be determined inasmuch as the distance of a loom of light is most questionable. The Coriolis effect accounts for why hurricanes go clockwise in the southern hemisphere but counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Long-range shooters must account for the Coriolis effect otherwise they will miss their target. And one of the common issues is that we see is the Coriolis effect and what guys are not doing is taking into account the effect that this can have on your shooting at longer ranges is if you're shooting west your targets gonna rotate up and towards us which is gonna cause the bullets to hit lower and if you're facing east the targets going to be dropping and slightly moving away which is gonna cause the hits to be higher we've made it down to our target that we shot at the west this is our west target here and as you can see they've all dropped in uh, quite low we've made it down to our target on the, the east target now and as you can see, um, they're not, not quite too high. Wind currents are affected by the Coriolis effect. Ocean currents are affected by the Coriolis effect. Some flat earthers say gravity is merely density. However, in a vacuum, two objects of vastly different density will fall at exactly the same rate, such as feathers and a bowling ball. This is because the inertia of an object is directly proportional to its mass. Henry Cavendish measured with accuracy the strength of gravity. The Cavendish experiment has been repeated many times in classrooms. It shows how a smaller mass moves towards a larger mass. Water naturally forms a sphere. This is easily seen in a zero gravity environment. A geoid is a reference frame used in surveying, which is the shape of the Earth if it had the same gravity potential at every point. It is a globe shape. For vertical datums, a reference ellipsoid is also used to base measurements on. It is also a globe shape. Surveyors routinely make curvature and refraction corrections, which are corrections to account for the Earth's curvature and the atmosphere's refraction of light, otherwise their measurements would be erroneous. Geodetic surveying takes the curvature of the Earth into account in its measurements. Plane surveying, on the other hand, assumes the Earth is flat. However, plane surveying is only done on small scales, whereas geodetic surveying is done on areas 260 kilometers squared or 161 miles squared and more. There are two general classifications of surveys, geodetic and plane. When measuring a small area, such as surveying for a small construction job, the area is assumed to be flat, aka the survey occurs on a flat plane. This is a plane survey. Because the world is not flat, vertical error results from this assumption. Over a distance of 300 feet, this error would only be 0 .002 feet. 
negligible even for very precise projects. Along a five-mile survey distance, however, this vertical distance error would be over 14 feet. When surveying a large area, such as a long highway or an entire state, it becomes imperative to account for the curvature of the Earth. The Earth is not a flat planet. This is called a geodetic survey. The water on the Suez Canal naturally follows the curvature of the Earth, as seen by the hull of this boat disappearing behind the horizon. The Golden Gate Bridge, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, the Humber Estuary Bridge, and the Normandy Bridge all have towers that are further apart at the top than at the base to account for the curvature of the Earth. The end of Volkswagen's 8.7 km test track in Aralesi, Germany, cannot be seen due to the curvature of the Earth. I'm doing 258, 200, I'm going faster than I can speak, 300, 320. That is amazing, it's so stable, I'm already up to 340. The horizon looks flat from ground view because it is a geometric circle of a sphere, which is a horizontal cut through a sphere. Some flat earthers claim one cannot see further than the horizon due to substances in the atmosphere. However, the International Visibility Code shows that the meteorological optical range for an exceptionally clear day is over 27 nautical miles, or 31 statute miles. This fact, combined with the extremely low refractive index of air, and the change in distance to the horizon the higher one goes in altitude makes it clear that the limited view of the horizon is principally due to the curvature of the earth rather than to visibility conditions. Many pilots and others claim that from 60,000 feet in altitude the curvature of the earth is clearly visible. The Concorde flew at this altitude. A plane can automatically adjust its altitude by means of an altimeter. Pilots also often make small adjustments while flying so any changes needed due to the curvature of the Earth are minimal and a normal part of flying. A person in an airplane can view a sunset twice by climbing an altitude just after the sun has set. Flat earthers claim the sunset is an optical illusion. Some posit a theory called electromagnetic acceleration, also known as bendy light, which states that light mysteriously bends upwards. They have no evidence for this. For the sunset to be an optical illusion, the horizon would have to be above eye level, which is clearly contrary to the fact that, at sea level, the horizon is slightly below eye level. The bendy light theory also posits that different colors of light do not refract at different frequencies. This is easily proven false by a white light passing through a prism. Rainbows are a natural example of this effect, as is the blue color of the sky, due to an effect called Rayleigh scattering.